Hi there. This is just a quick update, more of a follow-up to my preceding video on the first interview given by the new showrunner for the first Game of Thrones prequel TV series, House of the Dragon, a writer named Ryan Condal. Now, the first interview he did with a YouTube channel called Beyond the Trailer, and he was talking for a full hour, so I made a clip of it, of the part where he talked about House of the Dragon, and what will the visual style look like? Well, it'll be in the same universe as the original series, but obviously in a different time period. A few days after that, he gave a new Zoom interview to WinterIsComing.net, which, when was the last time a Game of Thrones writer actually gave an interview with one of the main fan sites? But anyway, he's given a full hour-long interview talking about his new podcast that he's co-hosting about movie memorabilia. And in this case, Winter is Coming actually went ahead and made its own short clip, seven minutes long, of the specific sections where he actually talked about House of the Dragon and how it came to be. So I don't need to make a clip. They already made a clip. So I'm just going to link you to their seven-minute thing. So go to the video description box below, check it out over there. And it's short, and it's not really about the new show, so it's not worth making a whole big video about this. This is audio only. It's just he was talking about one key detail of, well, how did this come to be? Now, again, in the earlier interview, he talked about how he already knew George R. R. Martin. He wasn't a stranger. He knew him through writer circles and stuff, so he was a friend of his for a while. But the new info we got is he said, oh, I'm not even new to the prequel pitches, that the way he phrased it is, I was one of the first names that came up, and ultimately the last. That not when they announced these in mid-2017, the five official pitches. This is back in 2016, when it was just spitballing ideas. They were suggestions, not formal pitches. When they were suggesting ideas. And Ryan Condell said, oh yeah, I was one of the names that was coming up, and I heavily campaigned to be a showrunner on a live-action adaptation of the Tales of Duncan Egg. Wow, which wins a lot of points with fans. That's a great idea, and that he, he's a big fan of it himself. In case you're not familiar with all this, the Tales of Duncan Egg are the first prequel era that George R. R. Martin started writing about. He's been writing about it since the late 1990s. On top of that, it's the only prequel setting that's been fully narrativized, with a POV narrator and dialogue and detail and stuff. All the other prequels we know about, their outlines provided in in-universe history textbooks like The World of Ice and Fire or Fire and Blood and The Dance of the Dragons prequel novellas, they're written as history books. This is from a character's perspective in Duncan Egg and you know, physical details of the world around him. It's a story. Unfortunately, Duncan Egg isn't finished. Well, he meant it as an anthology. There's time skips of years between each one. Only three are finished, and each one is a one-shot story, but they're the continuing adventures of Duncan Egg as they wander around Westeros. Only three are finished out of a planned twelve. And Martin did the right thing and said, I am putting that on hold, I have to devote all of my time and attention to getting the next main A Song of Ice and Fire novel out, The Winds of Winter. And if he said, oh, I'm working on the next Duncan Egg, people would be complaining, so I fully understand why that isn't finished. The main series isn't finished. I'm not, not making fun of him for that. that He's making great stuff. He can't just race it off in eight years and expect it to be good. He's taken his time to do it the right way. Anyway, Condal explained what we already knew, what Martin had said, that Martin doesn't want to make a TV series adaptation of Duncan Egg while it's unfinished. But as he explained it in this interview, HBO was actually really receptive to the idea of a Duncan Egg story. And he did the right thing. He pitched it, he said, as it would be a lot easier to produce. That it isn't this sprawling war or multi-continental story with Daenerys in the Eastern Continent. Duncan Egg only has one POV narrator, Sir Duncan, and his squire, who's this Aegon V, at the start of the story, he's this young Targaryen prince, 13th in line to the throne, but destined to become king one day, with Dunk as his lord commander of the Kingsguard. And because they're not getting into huge adventures, but like, they go to a joust, and there's some political intrigue, or they're fighting bandits, it is a heck of a lot cheaper and easier to produce, rather than like the later seasons of Game of Thrones, where 
They were just throwing money at the screen to try to impress people at an unfilmable scale and not worried about the story. It's a different kind of story, Duncan Egg. It's the most intimate, small-scale thing out of any of the prequels. It's like a character study, but it's easier to make. It's at the other end of the spectrum. So Condal said that's what he told HBO. It'd be a lot easier to produce. It's narrativized. HBO was really warm to the idea and was encouraging it, but ultimately it was George R. R. Martin himself who shut that down. He said, going... I'm not going to have them make a live-action Duncan Egg or even try to until I finish the whole novel series. We saw how that went with The Song of Ice and Fire. I want it to be done first. All the other stuff, like uh, House of the Dragon, The Dance of the Dragons, we know how it ends. They can't just start making stuff up and go, oh no, we're going somewhere with this. It's We know how it ends, and you're clearly changing it by like season five of Game of Thrones. Now this, we know what to expect or what they should be doing. So it was just really nice. He went, I was really pushing for Tales of Duncan Egg, and that's the one that Martin said, let's hold off on that. And wins a lot of points with fans. That, oh, he's a fan too. He really wanted to do that. One other minor detail he mentioned from the production on House of the Dragon is he said, I was just as surprised as anyone when we got greenlit to a full first season production order. You know, he didn't know if he'd be greenlit or not. He hoped. He said, if we got greenlit, I thought we'd be greenlit to make a pilot. And, but then suddenly they went, hey, make a full season. And I think we can attribute that to just how much time was lost on the Long Night prequel pilot. I've talked about this in other videos, like the Northern Ireland production stuff, that they're not going back to Northern Ireland because HBO didn't have a fallback plan. That even when all the production facilities in Belfast were warning them, stagger your pilots. If you're The whole point in having five pitches and more than one pilot is, if the first one doesn't do well, we have to do another one. Instead, they put all their eggs in one basket on the Long Night pilot and were genuinely surprised when it was bad, which is why they then spent a whole year starting over from scratch on House of the Dragon. That They couldn't afford to just waste time making a, taking another year off for a pilot as a test run, then going into full production. But imagine if they were filming the pilot next year in 2021, they'd be filming season one in 2022, and then airing in 2023 at best. Now, they're shooting for 2022 as the air date for House of the Dragon. They said they're going to be filming by like early December or January-ish. The, the initial stuff, at least. So, I'm not really too surprised at that. Of First, they're running really late due to the old HBO regime, thankfully. There's new people in charge. You, you didn't have a fallback plan in case Long Night didn't do well. And on top of that, from what Condal said, they seem to have a lot of faith in the project, both in the source material, in him as someone who's known Martin for years, and that he's sort of co-showrunner with Miguel Sapochnik, this experienced director who was really carrying the show in its later seasons from a logistical standpoint. We've all seen that new book coming out from James Hibbert talking about how, oh no, production logistics on the pilot and even the since season one through season four, they never got better. Production logistics were a nightmare on Game of Thrones because Benioff and Weiss weren't producers and by their own admission didn't know what they were doing. And there's this whole thing where they explain, oh, we all assumed HBO would pressure them into accepting a day-to-day -day showrunner director to run the logistics of it, not the story part, just how to run it. And they refused because they wanted to control everything. So I think it's a combination of factors of they're running late from Long Night, they have faith in the story, they have faith in Condal, and they have faith in Miguel Sapochnik that, look, why are we bothering to do a pilot? This is such a strong candidate. It is the strongest candidate out of all the other suggested ideas. It is the most source material out of all the other ideas. That Even though it's only an outline, when I say, oh, it's only an outline, it's a 60,000-word outline. And bits of it do have dialogue in it. It's a sprawling story. And it, the outline alone could easily sustain five to six years of story, possibly more if you go in the follow-up era after that in the Regency. So it was nice to see him talking about Tales of Duncan Egg and just, yeah, they were surprised that they went straight to season one without a pilot.